Hi guys, Jared Rhodes here, Cold Vision Outdoors. I'm out on Lake of the Woods. It's New Year's Day and I am in my house shoes and enjoying it here in the fish house, the hard house, not really roughing it. So we've caught a few saugers yet this morning, but uh, nothing real big, nothing to, to brag about. But I wanted to touch on a few things today and uh, let you know just a, a couple of things you can do to make your trip out on the ice much better. Let's get started. First, if you can get into one of these bad boys, that's the best thing you can do to introduce people to our sport. But if you can't, there's a lot of things that you can do. First things first, clothing. Make sure that your whole crew has the right clothing on for the temperatures and the conditions that you're gonna be dealing with. If you're gonna be in one of these things, hey, I'm in house shoes, sweatpants, sweatshirt. I don't even need the toque inside, but we're outside filming, so. Uh, but if I was in a pop-up today, it'd be a different story. I'd be in a full snowsuit, gloves, obviously snow boots, and uh, that would make my time out on the ice a lot more enjoyable. But since we're in the shack today, I'm coming out to cool off, actually. It's a little warm in there for me. So I thought I'd do a little filming and just touch on those little basics about keeping people comfortable. If you're gonna introduce somebody to a new sport, you want them to be comfortable so that they can try everything, you know, as far as lure presentation, you can't really think when you're shivering. So first things first, guys, keep your guest warm and make sure that you're warm and that everything is backed up times two. What that means is make sure you have two of everything that might break. So if you got tires on your wheelhouse, you better have a spare tire. If you have a furnace that has trouble, you better have some tools to work on it. Um, this model in particular has a suburban furnace and it has a sail switch and a couple other little parts that go out routinely. I always keep extras on hand just in case, but I've also put a backup diesel heater in my fish house. Um, you don't want to get out, especially out on some of these larger lakes and not have the equipment that's needed uh, to make it through the time that you're going to be on the ice. So make sure that you've got everything in doubles. Make sure that you've checked all your equipment twice before you leave the house. I've had this fish house out on the lake uh, in this particular spot for two days now and um, it's, it's doing really good. There is a little bit of uh, slush on the ice here, but it's really not that bad. I've got mine setting up about four to six inches uh, off of the ice, so that helps with any slush, but I'm, I am gonna be pulling it off today too, so I'm not gonna leave it out here all week for sure, but uh, get yourself some four by fours or some two by fours to make sure that you can put underneath the frame, in between the frame and the ice, just in case there is some flooding or in case there is, uh, you know, uh, a ridge or something that pops up overnight. Um, I didn't stay here last night. We went home. We were lucky enough to live close enough to uh, to the lake that we can go home sometimes. But, um, you know, if, if uh, you're going to leave your fish house out overnight, put it on some blocks. Make sure that, you know, it's not going to get flooded and froze into the lake because that can really make a mess, guys. So, anyway, those are just a couple tips that I wanted to hit on uh, this morning while we're out here. And, uh, Hopefully we'll uh, get you back to some fishing or some more drilling action shortly. One thing to keep in mind when you're drilling holes in a fish house are the angles and how close the walls are to the hole. So you wanna make sure when you set up to drill holes that you're not gonna be so close to a couch or to a wall that you actually cause damage to your fish house. So make sure that you have enough clearance and make sure that the holes are being drilled straight. Sometimes turning on the light on the auger helps with that so you can visualize that the auger is going straight up and down and then you don't have a crooked hole when you lower your fish house down to the ice. So first thing you want to do is take the lid for the fish house lid cover, the catch cover, off of your fishing hole and make sure again that you've left six, four to six inches between the frame and the ice before you drill. Okay guys, we're about to drill the first hole of the season in your new fish house. So the thing you want to make sure of is that you have your extension on because you're four to six inches off of the ice at this point and you've probably got 16 to 18 inches of ice to drill through. So let's get started. First things first, make sure that your auger is in forward. Reverse is not going to drill it, obviously. 
Also, if it's dim in your fish house, you can turn the light on. With my Jiffy Rogue, we've got a light that we can turn on. We've got it in forward, and we're gonna put it in shack mode, which means we wanna just kinda take it slow and drill a nice hole. We're not gonna put it in turbo speed. We wanna make a nice clean hole for our first hole, and we want it to be nice and controlled. So let's get started in drilling. As you can see, I'm almost to the bottom of the floor. I'm going to put it in reverse. Pushed all that slush back through the hole. And that's basically all you got to do, guys. So, as you can see, with the extension at the lowest setting, not the highest setting, we still had quite a bit of space between the floor and the head unit. But if you didn't have that extension on, you would be hard pressed to drill that hole correctly. So we'll move on, drill some more holes, and get this away. Good boy. Good Lord. The biggest mess. So we're going to move on, drill some more holes. That way we can get fishing today in your shack. Okay. Once all the holes are drilled, it's time to lower your fish house to the ice. Each fish house has a different way of lowering to the ice. This particular model has hydraulics. Once your fish house is lowered to the ice, you need to go inside and put your hole sleeves in and scoop the holes out. Hopefully, I have my helpers today to help me do that. Okay, so I've got the kids cleaning out the fish holes. I want to touch on a, a real quick tip that a lot of people don't think about or they don't worry about until they get out on the ice and then it's too late after they've already drilled their holes. But uh, depending on how much snow you have on the lake, sometimes will depend on how much slush you have on the lake. And depending on how much slush you have on the lake will depend on whether or not you need to block your trailer frame. Blocking your trailer frame is taking a four by four or some two by fours and putting under the frame between the ice and the frame of the fish house so that the slush in the water doesn't get up into the frame and then freeze overnight or freeze while you're fishing and then you become locked down to the lake and that can be a real problem. So always bring some four by fours and some two by fours. Ask with your local uh, resort, make sure that uh, they know that you're going out with the fish house and how big that fish house is and then what area of the lake you're gonna be fishing on because you know there may be a ridge on one part of the lake that leaks, there may be some uh, leaking because of the pressure that the snow causes, the hydraulic of the, the water to come up through the holes with the snow pushing down on it. You want to ask your resort or wherever you go out of, or maybe just some of the locals, what the ice conditions and what the slush conditions are like. And also, I myself, before I drill my holes, I like to be four to six inches above the ice. That way, when I drill my holes, that ice and slush comes out underneath the fish house and not inside all over the floor. Because then you end up mopping and sweeping all day long, and it just becomes a, a rigorous mess. So. At this point, we're pretty much set in here. I did exactly what I, I thought out to do, and we come out of Spring Still. That's my home resort that I like to fish out of, and that's in northern Minnesota. It's uh, actually northern War Road, Minnesota, and uh, I've been fishing this area for the last four years. I always buy uh, a pass there, and I go ahead and get the season pass. It's a little bit more, but I know I'm going to be out here almost every day, or every week at least. So, um, you know, get to know the areas that you like to fish and get to know the ice conditions before you go out and decide to plop your fish house down. So that's where we're at right now. And I appreciate, appreciate you guys uh, tuning in with us and checking this out. My kiddos are probably about tired of scooping ice at this point. Do you have any more holes left you need to scoop? Two more? Wow. Well, 
once we push the sleeves in and kind of push some of that uh, you know we've got a lot of snow on the lake right now and we've, we've had a little bit of flooding but uh, to push some of the slush back down into the hole so the kids are scooping it out for me which is super nice but we're going to get fishing soon so hopefully you'll be seeing some nice catches come out of this fish house this season okay so let's walk inside here and see what it's like to fish in a wheelhouse hi guys well, i got the kids working hard cleaning out the fish holes got the ball game on tv got our microwave up here got our range got our alaskan malamute of course coda hi coda hi got the refrigerator got a bathroom back behind the coats behind the door there of course we got a grouse mount got to have that and we got all of our holes drilled and i've got the dinette taken out right now and this actually makes out into a bed and i've got a diesel heater under the seat back there but i've got the dine out that dinette table taken out now so that you can actually fish that area and there's eight fish holes in this fish house so it accommodates in minnesota four people so four people can fish very comfortably in here we got tip-ups that we or uh, i'm sorry rattle reels that we're going to put down and uh that's pretty much the short and skinny of it. I'll beat him. Oh my gosh. Wait. I think that's mine, Maddie. Are you all wound up again? I don't think so. Wait, no. You might have a no, fish this too. No, a fish. He's wiggling. He's wiggling too. You might have a fish too. I think that's... Wait. It's a fish. It's a fish. It's a fish. Mine's wiggling too, Maddie. So fish. Like... I got him. Are you good? You see it? Looks like it might be pretty good. Man, he's on a roll over here. Oh, wait, I got a fish. Uh, uh, we're winding up. Oh, no, this is a fish. This is a fish. Look, look at the air bubbles. Oh, wait. All right, pull it up. Good job. Ooh. Hey, how about that? That's a nice, what is that, a sauger or walleye? Coda, get back. Looks like a walleye. Yeah. Can you grab it? You got it? Yeah, got him. Okay, let me help you out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, either. First fish of the... Oh, yeah, I caught the first fish. Nice. Look at you. It's all about this lure. Look at you. Hey, I'm with you somewhere. No. The Lake of the Woods walleye. Can't have that. Rattle reel goes off. Maddie's at the hole. There you go. Oh, God. oh a little Ooh. perch. A little perch. Nice. Ooh. Nice catch. Two fish. Wow. At this point, my cameras were running low on battery, so I stopped videoing and only took pictures of our catches. It was easier to do the dad thing this way as well. We caught mostly perch, sauger, and walleye, but we definitely had enough for a nice little dinner that night, and the kids all enjoyed it, and we all had a great evening in the fish house. The last thing to discuss is cleanup. Once your wheels are up and you're about to pull off of the lake, pull up a little bit and look behind you. It should look something like this. Most of the trash you can pick up off the lake and put in a bag and take with you. But sometimes your blocking can be a little difficult. The 4x4s and the 2x4s tend to stick to the lake and it's very important that you get those up. I use my Jiffy Malax chisel to chisel these pieces off of the lake and bring them with me. You would hate for somebody to come along in a snowmobile or a bomber or some other piece of machinery and either damage their equipment or hurt themselves. So make sure to be a good sportsman, pick up after yourself, and if you have holes 10 inches or bigger, it's always smart to mark those holes or fill them in if you can with snow. But if you're a spear house, please make sure that you mark those spear holes so that no one goes through the ice. This has been Jared Rhodes with Cold Vision Outdoors. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and visit my partners, jiffyonice.com. Use my promo code JRhodes 
for 10% off your next order. Again, thanks for tuning in and we hope to see you on the next video.